Hello and welcome to Sequel Podcast. I'm Matt Bonta, and uh, I've been given the grim duty of informing everyone that we have lost Corey Easley, the longtime podcast partner of myself here at Sequel. Um, little did everyone know that he had a secret life as a prostitute on 4th Street here in Reno, Nevada, our very own famous red light district, 4th Street. Uh, Corey was soliciting himself to what we now know was an undercover police officer. Um, so much so that even after several attempts of the police officer of telling Corey to back down, get off of me, I am a cop, you are under arrest, Corey was just so insatiated with lust and hunger that he could not stop himself and could not back down. Uh, unfortunately for the police officer, though, when he fired his gun on Corey, he bit down really hard. And there two very unfortunate accidents happened that night. Last night. Yesterday? This morning. I don't know. I don't care. Anyways, here at Sequel Podcast, the... Uh, the, the team and crew we have behind the scenes have created a farewell in the Mariam montage of Corey Easley. I would like everyone to take a moment of silence and enjoy the video. Don't let yourself go. All right, moving on. Now, with that out of the way, I would like to introduce my new, very special guest. Um, he has been recently in the news. Uh, for those who don't know, I would like to welcome uh, President-elect... President Trump! Uh, sorry, sir. Sorry. Uh, President Trump. Uh, how are you doing today, sir? Fantastic. What would you have done differently in in Corey's position had you been faced against that cop? You need tremendous stamina. Stamina? Stamina. Uh, for those who don't know, I would like to welcome. Uh, can we get a can we get a spot on him real quick? No, get those lights off. Uh, sorry, sorry. We'll we'll get those off here in a second. Off. Yep. Uh, turn those off, please. Uh, anyways. Um, so, uh, about that experience that we were talking about, about what happened with Corey, uh, can you can you talk about that? And I made a lot of money in Atlantic City, and I'm very proud of it. We owe Japan more than that. Uh, more money doing what you did, what Corey did in his predicament. You did this in Atlantic City. Uh, what kind of life do you lead, sir? I love my life. Uh, you seem to really be full of yourself and, and all the money you make. Uh, can we can we talk about uh, Corey real quick? What a beautiful baby! Uh, yes, but but Corey, Corey is dead. Sir, can you please have some sympathy? You have to speak English. I am speaking English, sir, and I think you should get out of here. You're fired. No, you are fired, sir. Wrong. I'm going to get up and call security. Sit down. You are in big trouble, dude. I don't care. You don't care? You don't care? Ooh, that's it. That's it. Just you wait. You're not a nice person. Hey, man. Don't you say I'm not a nice person. I mean, plenty of people say that I'm nice. Then there's something wrong with you. You're certainly not very good. Oof. That That doesn't even make any sense. And it only makes common sense. No, it, it doesn't make any common sense. I mean, you're an idiot. Nope. Yes. Nope. Yes. Nope.
All right, that's enough. Time to go. Get your coat. Get out of here. No coats! Ooh, that's it. Wrong with you, you certainly... That's it. Just you wait. You're not a nice person. Hey, man. Don't you say I'm not a nice person. I mean, plenty of people say that I'm nice. Then there's something wrong with you. You're certainly not very good. That that doesn't even make any sense. And it only makes common sense. No, it, it doesn't make any... I mean... You're an idiot. Idiot. Nope. Yes. Nope. Yes. Nope. Shut up. All right. That's enough. Time to go. Get your coat. Get out of here. All right. Now that we've gotten rid of President-elect Donald Trump, glad he's gone. And with that, here's my real guest. Uh, I'm Matt Bonta. And I'm Dakota Kimes. Dakota is back in the seat again. It's a different seat, different chair. Um, last time you were here was when we did the podcast in the living room with uh, Corey and Todd and Derek. Yeah. Um, but prior to that, two years ago, November 27th, 2014, we sat down and podcasted just you and me for the That's last time. Today is 11-28. Oh, shit. So, like, two basically, years in a day. Yes. Basically, exactly two years ago was the last time you and I sat down and podcasted. Oh, God. It's been so long. <laughs> it's all right. I well, you, when we were making Street Toughs, we stopped podcasting. I stopped podcasting. Really? Yeah, basically. Um, and, of course, when I got together with Rose, I stopped podcasting. Um so my last official podcast was in December of 2014, and then me and Corey started again last October. Oh, wow. Um, and I've been putting them all online again. It was like a monthly occurrence there for a super long time. No, it was like a weekly, weekly occurrence. Oh, good God. This is officially episode 107. Holy shit, really? Yes. And that doesn't include episodes that were considered the same episode, but split up into three parts. So we're well over the 107 mark, but officially this is episode 107. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll and, keep it official. And I happened to listen to some of that podcast that we were talk that we were on mm -hmm. two years ago, um, and it's funny because uh, we were discussing like uh, <laughs> we were discussing how we we're, we're doing these podcasts and we're sitting down and we're talking. And we'll have these for the future for ourselves and for our kids. Oh. Which is funny, because now you're actually going to have a kid. That's crazy. Yeah. Thinking of stuff like that has become much more important, if that makes any sense. Like, I'm 28, and I feel like Your after legacy. I left my dad's house, I, like, just stopped keeping any kind of, like, record of what it is that I was doing. If that makes any sense. So, like, uh, what, when you were 18, 20, 21? Like, yeah, taking pictures or fucking doing stuff like this. The only time I did anything like this or, like, recorded my thoughts of any kind would have been... Well, you, Dakota, basically have a good chunk of your life recorded by me. It's true. <laughs> so... And thank you. Now that I understand what that means, thank you. And not just with the podcast, but, like... The movies that we made. That's like, true. That's you. So, like, Patriot Zombie on, I mean, sometimes it's you being somebody else. Yeah. In Patriot Zombie, you know, it's kind of you with the script a little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, the, all the gag reel stuff, that's all you. And then, of course, all the podcasts. That's true. So, like, I mean, we have, like, not to cover ground that we covered two years ago. But, true. But we have successfully chronicled... Now that 20s. you have a child, so like, uh, you know, that's something people need to think about these days. And I know it's kind of like a joke and a thing out there. I don't know. It's I just, not the first time someone's brought it up, but like all these people with their fucking, their Facebook posts where they're getting drunk and they're partying. It's like, oh my God. And then some, suddenly like 20 years later, 10 years later, their kid is like, <laughs> Yo, look at the Facebook feed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You were faced on this day. Eight years ago today. Like, <laughs> repost this. Yes. Oh, like, fuck. Isn't that crazy, though? 
that people need to think about that now. I don't know. I, I guess I just got into like, I felt like everybody was oversharing and over. Because I can like, go to anybody's Facebook based on their own uh, preference and what they let people see, and you can just scroll all the way down to their first post on Facebook and just read their entire history. Yeah. So your kids can go and do that for you. Oh, man. Unless, I don't know. It's just Facebook history, not internet history, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Dad went through a weird phase. <laughs> Have you ever thought about that, though? Yeah, I don't know. It's much more important recently. I guess I really never put any thought into it before. I mean, by the way, since we podcasted with Dakota... Oh, yeah. Nicole has gone pregnant, and now they're getting married. Totally not, forgot not your the, wedding invitation. I have it. I thought you guys mailed them out. You forgot it as in, in the house or in the car? It's in the house. Okay. <laughs> so you didn't mail out invitations. I did not mail. I did not mail out a select few. I was like, I want to give this to this person. Like, here you go. Please come. Right. Well, I had <laughs> when to, you get it in the mail, it's just like, man, somebody else will deliver it. Fuck it. <laughs> there are like a select few that I'm like, I want you to reserve this day. Eye contact. <laughs> well, I mean, I had to text Nicole about that like a week ago. I'm so, dude, we're <laughs> so behind on shit. It's not even funny. I would have procrastinated another eight months if we would have been able to do it in January. Mm -hmm. But at least like more of it would have been done. In January? Or in uh, July mm -hmm. is when we were trying to do it originally. And we found out she was, yeah. As I've made the joke several You're going to marry my daughter. But now for the viewing audience, we can do the, the joke again. Our listening audience, <laughs> listening audience. Wait, the camera's on? Shit. <laughs> I haven't put my face on. And you look like Santa Claus, by the way. Dakota is going through a Santa Claus phase. It's true. Like, I've never seen him this hairy before. I bought a house, got a new job, and grew a beard. Are you still at the old job, too? No. You're not I, doing I've those weekends doing that. anymore? Fuck that, dude. No. I hit like two and a half, almost three months of doing it and was just like, nope, can't do this anymore. I'm sorry. It was, <laughs> I don't know. It was nice. It's nice, nice to be over. Uh, nice, nice to like kind of put my mind at ease, but then I just realized that I had no time to take care of anything. That's kind of where I am right now with, uh, because I'm working nine and a half hours, so basically ten hours. Yeah. Um, every day at work is peak. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, it fucking gets dark, and I feel like unless I complete everything during that two-hour frame <laughs> of sunlight, I'm pretty useless once it once the sun goes down. Yeah. And it feels like I lost all opportunity to get anything done, even though I haven't. But, I mean, if the sun was out until fucking 9 o'clock, it would feel like I had until 9 o'clock. Sun doesn't care about your feelings. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and it fucks me up, and I get tired. I get all excited, because every morning, I I don't know, I like nighttime, if that makes any sense. Everyone likes different things. I like the nighttime. But uh, I feel like I'm more productive, and I'm more like... At night? Yeah, because during the day, if it's still light out, and it's... You know, eight nine o'clock. The only then, darkness I like is like when I get up early and I complete everything fuck, just when the sun is coming up. Fuck that! I feel dude. accomplished. Fuck getting up early. It's like get up, fucking do everything, and then you have the whole day to do whatever you want. If I was up that early, I would want to sleep all day. I'm a morning person. I like when like the sun goes down because I'm not distracted by what's going on outside, or I'm not like tempted to go be outside. It's like, oh well, I could either. Sit here and watch TV, or I could clean something, or, you know, just sit down. So you want to get out when the sun's out. Yeah. I like to be outside as much as possible. And I feel like I'm, I feel like I waste, like, my day is wasted if I don't go outside all day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, oh, okay, well, the house has to get clean. It was like, well, we can. No, I, the I know that. I feel, the, goes I feel the same way, too. Like, if you stay in and do nothing all day while the sun's out. Like, what the fuck were we doing? <laughs> yeah, what, what is wrong with you, sir? You are an idiot. <laughs> Even if you just, I don't know. From the time I was a little kid, my dad, sun's out, you should be too. Go. Go be outside. Mm -hmm. 
Like, oh, we don't have anything to do. Like, stand outside. You will figure something out. And there have been some times where I just, like, walk out in the backyard. And I'm like, hmm. Your oh, hey, there's a ball. I'm going to throw, gonna throw a ball. My dad's awesome. <laughs> I know, but all the stories you tell everybody. He's dad, kind of like a hard ass. ass. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of want to be that way for my kids, though. <laughs> I feel I feel like there there it's was all, some good most a lot people of good are like up. I'm gonna do things completely different. No, I'm gonna do some like there's some slight tweaks, but for the most part, I feel like I had a really good some dad. modern millennial tweaks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not okay to beat up the gay kid <laughs> <laughs> or the brown kid or the, yeah, I don't know about those brown kids. <laughs> totally kidding. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel like. And that's another thing I've been, I don't know, this whole... You're like, contemplating, like, everything, parent, right? Yeah, the, like, everything about yourself is like, oh, you're going to have a kid. Holy shit. Is everything good? Like, and then you, like, check through this, and then you're like, okay, well, that's done. But, holy shit, we have this whole other compartment of my life that needs, like, rearranging. And it's crazy, like... When is she due? Uh, May. May? May. Uh, end of May, like, 20th. It keeps vacillating when we go to the doctor, like, 22nd, 18th. How scary. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's fucking, it's, it's intense. It's so crazy. And the last appointment we went to, they just did, like, the outside checkup, and I'm like, okay, you guys are all good. Um, you guys want to see the baby? And The uh, ultrasound? Yeah. And Nicole's like, uh, no. I'm like, Yes. We're seeing the baby. Like, anytime you give me an opportunity, I will see that baby. And, uh, yeah, dude, it's got, like, hands. Like, you can see its fingers. And, like, <laughs> it kept moving around. Like, it would, you could tell it would, like, get comfortable. And then the doctor would kind of, like, move the little, like, stomach probe thing. Right. And it would, like, notice the motion and start, like, freaking out. And, really? Yeah. Nicole's starting to show. Is she? Yeah, dude. It's Nicole has always been, like, tiny. The longest exactly. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I just feel like I have to take, like, a huge <laughs> shit. Like, I just feel like I have to take a huge shit. But I, every time that I go and take a shit, I still feel like I have to take a shit. Oh, God. <laughs> like, you know that's going to get worse, right? She's, like, just over four months along. Is that right? So, basically, halfway there almost. Oh, coming up on four months. Coming yeah. up on halfway. Point of no return. She still fit in her dress. Look <laughs> 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 on your face. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, it's only gonna get further and further out. We're only like what? Two she weeks wouldn't away. let me. She wouldn't let me see it. No, we're like three weeks away. Because next, because next weekend it's the eighteenth. Yeah, it's the eighteenth. So one, two, and a ski. Three. Lady. Okay, so it's three. Three weeks from this Sunday, correct? Three weeks from yesterday. Oh, shit. Today's um, Monday, right? <laughs> yeah, fuck. Anyways. Did you forget something? No, I just... The whole marriage thing is tripping me up. If that makes any sense. No, I mean, we've talked about this before yeah. already, the one we had dinner. Um, But, I mean, it's natural progression. It's not natural. That's the thing that that's, like... That's the thing that it's, bothers uh, me about it. It's, societal it's, progression. Exactly. It's it's a it's like a I don't know. It's well, look, a social okay. convention. After like I just, well yeah after I got divorced, you know I you know my I changed completely. Kind of. I mean, I'm still me. <laughs> <laughs> I changed completely. But like of. I I felt a little a lot. No 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 no. Uh, what? Sorry. <laughs> no I uh, I felt like. People can be together forever without having to get married because marriage tends to add a stigma to the relationship. Exactly. But never say never. Lo and behold, here I am married again. I just don't see the necessity in it. And and like the necessity for me is created. You know, I don't see by... the necessity either, but you get to that point and, and you've got a different head than me, but it's like, well, I mean, I kind of want, maybe it's just the whole ownership thing. <laughs> It's it's a very nice thing to do, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Don't choke on those words. It's, no, it's it's a very nice thing to do. Like it feels nice. It's like yeah, it affirmational. Not, yes, and like, affirmation. Yes. It's but 
affirmations are empty. Like, that's what an affirmation is. It's like just something somebody says to make you feel better. Well, confirmation. <laughs> confirmation <laughs> is like when I wake up tomorrow morning, like, hey, I you're, came home again tonight. Confirming. I'm confirming the fact that I'm still working out forever because I'm here. I'll see you tonight. We'll do the same thing over again. Confirma It'll be awesome. Confirmation that you're still alive. <laughs> exactly. Waking up in the morning. <laughs> I did it again! <laughs> <laughs> Confirmed. Confirmed. Check that one off the list. Yeah. <laughs> Check it off again tomorrow. Didn't die in my sleep. Dope. Confirmed. <laughs> Confirmed. <sighs> but, I don't know. The, nece the necessity for marriage is created in me needing or wanting to be in a relationship with Nicole. That's the only, like... That's the and you're only saying you already necessity. had that anyways. Exactly. And that's what's confusing to me is like, everything's been super good. Like, we're going on, it'll be seven years in there July. There was a point, Dakota, where I'd look on Facebook and it says, no longer in a relationship with Nicole. And then like two days later, is in a relationship. I, I didn't even look at that shit because I You didn't have didn't a Facebook that. at that point. Oh, you, okay. you only recently got It was one. a little rocky at the beginning. And, and I got to be honest, I have a tendency... And I think that this that was back in 2011 me, when we were in the house. Yeah, I think that part of me is dreading having to let go of it, but I see a necessity in it. In that I'm not the kind of guy that's like super understanding about anything. It's not. It's <laughs> not. Not. No, you anything. are super understanding. Exactly. You're Mr. Cool guy. But even being Mr. Cool guy doesn't mean that there aren't those ticks. Where you it's know? just like, <laughs> it's like, who am I? Exactly. What the fuck is, what? and and I just, like, there are things that I just can't let go. And then, like, like the next day, it's stuff a week that later, doesn't you're like, really what? matter. Yeah. Exactly. It's stuff that, Where like, when you really think about it, you're like, that who doesn't fucking it? matter, but fuck that. Like, <laughs> right. And then a week and later, it's like, who was I? Exactly. I was cool with that. <laughs> I'm cool with it now. Yeah, just dude. don't do it again. <laughs> I don't know. It's just stuff that I, I, and and I don't know. There, I'm just a very, very like hard nosed like, and it's more about stuff that like I have the answer, and then you're coming to me for the answer, and then if you don't do what I say, fuck you and fuck your problems. <laughs> I ain't playing this game anymore. Like, and I'm and I'm not even the I'm not even like super far away from like saying that. Like, if you push me and, like, you're asking me to give a shit anymore, I will just tell you straight out. I don't fucking care. I told you what I would do. Fuck you. Fuck your problems. And, like... <laughs> it's... it's and, Fuck your problems. And that's, that's the result of what you're talking about. That's the result of, of, of growing up and just being you. It's not... That's everybody, man. I, dude, Nicole is the most compassionate caring person that I have ever met in my entire life. Not fucking once has she ever looked at me. And there have been times, you know, I was bitching about stuff with my old job and it's the same problem. And then you're just like rehashing the same problem. Not venting. Ex I don't vent. I want <laughs> what like you just said sounded like venting to me, but I want an active solution. I want somebody to be like, okay, here's how you solve that shit. Go. <laughs> and then I don't know because I grew up my dad was very much like that like okay you're asking me for advice you asked me for advice I've given you advice I'm not going to fucking waste my breath again you know what I would do you know how to handle the situation you're just choosing not to do it right I've heard those words so she was just father's listening mouth. to you opposed to actively getting involved and that's where I and that's one of our biggest like reoccurring arguments is because I don't she says that I don't listen but I look at it like I'm listening right. really so well. If I can to like you, and then you throw out some solutions, and she's like, "Who are you?" Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're so unsupportive. <laughs> I'm a terrible listener. I think that's every every relationship. Oh. Every relationship has a listener, and and the other one, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm the other one. I'm the undefinable what, what, entity. What, what would you even call that? So I don't a listener, know. the and asshole, a doer. Is what I feel like. Feel like an asshole every time it comes up. Or uh, but, but you shouldn't because that's just how it is. That's how I was with my first wife. It's how I am with my second wife. I feel like you're, but you're I'm right. the venter. It's a ne it's a necessary like dynamic. But I think that that lack of understanding the other half 
is where I fall short. Where like I under I don't understand that she just needs to talk. And I'm well, I've evolved to offer into like, both. I've evolved into both. If Rose has something to say to me, I'll throw out some solutions. And she doesn't like I just want you to listen. She doesn't do that. But she doesn't necessarily need any solutions either. That makes um, sense. As for me, I kind of just want to vent. I don't need solutions because I have the solution already, but I need to get this shit off of my chest. <laughs> yeah. I need to say, fuck these people. I need to tell somebody how I feel about it. That makes sense. I don't know. I look at it like I'm, I'm more the kind of person, like, if I'm coming to you and I'm talking to you about something, that means that any solution that I was able to come up with hasn't worked and I need like some different ideas. I need some other shit. Tell me your input. Well, I mean look if I got a bad day out. and I'm talking about it like this fucking asshole mm -hmm. and this fucking situation and fuck all this, you know, I want someone to be like, Yeah, fuck mm -hmm. them. You're right, fuck them. That sucks. I want somebody I to want look at me and be like, say, you know how you avoid that in the that's future? Cool. <laughs> you know how to avoid that in the future? Handle this. Right. And you know, it's like I I know how to handle it. I just I just want somebody to hear me fucking throw out my bullshit. About these fucking idiots. That makes sense. That I deal with. <laughs> like, I, I know what to do in the situation, but, like, I want to have the conversation. So you want to waste time. <laughs> no, like, uh, you know when you put fucking something in the fri or in the microwave and uh, there's, like, a popcorn bag and it's building up and it's building up and you got to let the steam out. You just gotta let release it and get some of that pressure off, and then you can fucking chill. Then you can. But if, if you're popcorn. like, I mean, like, <laughs> like I can be at work all day and not really have anyone to talk to, and, and depending upon what it is I'm doing, and if it's a particularly shitty day and things just kind of build, I need to release. That makes sense to a degree. Like I've already handled the situations that I've dealt with that pissed me off. So I don't need someone to tell me, like, well, you should have done this, or why don't you do this? It's like, I, I did. I took care of it. See, I look at it, I'm, and I I make, like, very strong connections between events. It's like, yes, they're different, and they're different people that you're dealing with, and they're different, and they're different, but there's always a common thread. And there are certain things that people do that piss me off. And it's that same fucking thing. You really hit and those P's hard. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, only when you say piss me off. <laughs> yeah, piss me off. You're pissing me off. But uh, there, there are certain things that people do that piss me off. And if I can learn how to deal with that on my end. So you just take it and you don't even, you don't even vent is what you're saying. You don't need to vent. I... Uh, I can't really think of any instances where I just needed to like talk to somebody just to have somebody listen to me. So you keep all your shit in then? What do you guys talk about after work? How was your day? And then she right. goes off for like a half hour diatribe and then I talk for about five minutes. And <laughs> I went to work. It was I went okay. to work. It was a good day. Cool. Or like, I don't know. She we gave, like she to both me, vent to each other. She gave me some good advice on how to deal with... Uh, I was having the guy that I was working with was getting really, really stressed out about, you know, everything going on all at once. Cause we're trying to close out like a bunch of different jobs. And, uh, he was kind of being a jerk in all reality. And she kind of like helped me to kind of, he was being a jerk, uh, inactively or he was conscious. Actively. Being and, and I don't know if it was consciously, or I don't know if it was like, I'm going to be a dick to Dakota. Or if it was just like, I'm super stressed out. I got no time to fucking deal with you or your questions or like anything. Blah. Right. So that's inactive. While the first one you mentioned was active. I don't, I, I don't think that it was malicious. Okay. There you go. Um, Even better. But she really kind of helped me look at it a different way because I, I felt like he was actively like going out of his way to be a jerk. And she, you know, helped me to kind of understand where he would be at. Oh, so putting yourself in issues. Yeah. I'm not that guy. I'm just like you. I don't do that to you, so you don't do that to me. And that's hey, like pal. that's our understanding. <laughs> don't you yell at me, buddy. <laughs> you guy. Guy. <laughs> Listen here. Hey guy. Hello. <laughs> Friend. <laughs> Friendo. <laughs> I'm gonna flip a coin, okay? 
Heads, you're getting kicked in the dick. What are we drinking here, Dakota? I don't even know. It was hot cocoa. I taste Bailey's. Pumpkin and spice something, Bailey's. Something pumpkin else. Pumpkin spice rum. You have pumpkin spice rum? Yes. You're such a woman with your alcohol. Yeah, well, no, like, okay. I, <laughs> I just like have whiskey and tequila, and, and I don't have multiple tequilas, I'm, or I don't have multiple I'm whiskeys. I'm such a whore for, like, new and cool things. <laughs> <laughs> if it's in a cool new bottle. <laughs> Same shit, just put it in a different bottle. Oh, my God, I got to have it. Well, I mean, during Halloween, uh, Captain Morgan had a, you know, it's up there, and it's like a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin spice rum. And I was like, oh, sweet. I got it for the Halloween party, and it tastes good. You know, I'm not like fucking gay pumpkin spice fucking coffee guy, but pumpkin spice tastes good. I like pumpkin spice. Yeah, whatever. So, I got pumpkin spice. And they only serve it during Halloween. It's not like it's a fall thing. It's like the day after Halloween. They didn't have it anymore, so I can't mm -hmm. get it. So what I got is what I got. And when it's gone, <laughs> Deal it's with gone. It. Yeah. Until next year. If they bring it back. But, I mean, it was pretty good. I, did you see the Captain Morgan Cannon Blast bottle? Where it's like, it's like a round bottle. It's the same thing. It's just with an orange label. So it's <laughs> the exact same thing. But it's, it's pumpkin spice flavored rum in, in it rather than whatever. I think it was a darker Captain Morgan in the Cannonball Blast. Bottle. Okay. I don't like rum. I don't know why I don't like rum. I, don't. I thought you were a pirate. No. You look kind of like a pirate. No. Pirate Santa Claus. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead of taking your booty, I'll distribute it to all the Yeah, I thought you didn't like rum. But fuck you. Not a rum guy. What is wrong with rum? I don't really know. Like, what, in all honesty, is so different from rum and whiskey and bourbon See, I think for me, it all I mean, has. You can the, have a low end alcohol burn. Yes, but it's the the aftertaste. So they fucking, which is what I hate about alcohol is is which is what I hate about uh, coffee and beer is it's got that that bitterness in the back of your tongue once you're done drinking it. Which is why I like PBR. See, I feel... <laughs> dude, are you serious? You know I like PBR. I know you like PBR, but I didn't know why. You never explained why. The lighter, the better, because it's got less of a beer taste. No. Oh, man, no. That's oh, why you like no, that no, fucking no. Red Horse so much. That's a dark-ass fucking beer. That was super good. <laughs> okay, I'm <laughs> drinking a pack of car when I went to go pick up your wife's parents. Oh, man. You were drinking in the car, and you said it was cool. That it is, is cool. against the law. No, 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 no. It's illegal for the driver to be consuming Open alcohol. container. The way it's been explained to me, <laughs> and the way that I've done it, and I've been pulled over where, like, I'm in the back seat drinking a beer. Cop counts. One, two, open beers. Three people in the car. Really? You've been You're not over. drinking. Yeah. Really? Yes. So why were you pulled over? Speeding? Uh, that would be my guess. I don't really know. <laughs> you were drunk in the back of the car. Back of a sh uh, Chevy Avalanche. Yeah? It was dope. <laughs> Everyone was drinking but the driver. Everybody was drinking but the driver. And the cop was cool with it. Yeah, he took him out and like breathalyzed him, make sure like he hadn't been drinking. Gave him a ticket. Yeah, gave him a ticket for speeding. and Well, along the way. Have a good one, dude. Really? I swear to God. What is the open container law? You can't have an open container for the fucking driver. driver. Then what's like, oh, three people in the car? Three beers? You're drinking a beer, dipshit. <laughs> if you say so, man, I still think that's maybe that was just a lucky a lucky maybe you thought you had like a diet coke in your hand or something. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I see you're drinking Diet Coke. Hey, and you're acting a bit ridiculous, but I'm going to look past that. <laughs> oh, man. There's no way in hell that I think. <laughs> That's cool. Whatever. So, anyways, we're talking about alcohol and the difference between rum and whiskey. I don't know. I feel like tequila has like an almost. No, like no. Sweet I, can, I know the difference aftertaste. between tequila. A lighter. Like, tequila definitely tastes like tequila. I got that. That is very distinct. Um, the clear, the clear alcohols, 
They can taste different. Oh, God, I hate clear aqua. So, like, tequila has a very distinct taste. I know that taste. I don't typically like clear tequila either. Um, and then, uh, well, clear and, like, silver and gold tequila, they basically taste the same to me. Really? I think so. Oh, wow. I think maybe the gold tequila might have a little bit of a heavier yeah. consistency. I don't know about consistency. It's, like it's more texture. like a... Uh, you could say texture. I don't but know. it basically smells and tastes the same. Um, whereas um, all, I know gin tastes like celery. Gin tastes fucking horrible. It does taste pretty bad. It tastes like celery. <laughs> to me, it tastes like a juniper bush smells. <laughs> like like I, if you I've were got to, no frame of reference. If you were to that. like walk out, I guarantee there's a juniper bush somewhere right around here, and it. Almost smells like cat pee without like that super ammonia y, but sure. like the rest of cat pee, juniper bush. Without the burning smell. Yeah, without like your eyes watering and feeling like you're like gagging and on that, the air because <laughs> it's like thicker than normal air. And that's that's gin that's for a juniper. You. That's gin for you. It's gin. Yeah, and, and I just But it, it tastes distinct, right? And vodka kind of has no uh no flavor really. Do you think vodka has a flavor? It tastes like paint thinner. <laughs> Like if, yes. Like when you smell paint thinner, you're like, oh, holy shit. Right. Like you do that same thing it's kinda, sniffing vodka. Right. And, and, but then like the darker. But it mixes well with everything. Right. You're like, hey, I enjoy whatever beverage I have in vodka my hand. Let's throw some vodka in it. Yeah. <laughs> vodka and pretty much anything is going to be good. So you don't like rum and Coke? Uh, I would prefer, I prefer whiskey and Coke. Whiskey and Coke. Um, like Jack Daniels and Coke. Yeah, I don't really like Jack Daniels. No, it's a cheap brand. No, it's not that it's cheap. It's just like, and it might be like a perception thing. Like I perceive people who drink Jack Daniels to be like wearing leather jackets and throwing up on themselves and like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> seems accurate. Yeah. Well, Patrick. Oh, uh, have you talked to Patrick? Kind of like, uh, when did I hit him up? I hit him up. He's that dude that I just always like wish the best for, but I kind of know he's gonna. I like, think he's stick fine. His head in his no, own no, ass I, again. I think he's fine. I think he's a different Patrick than we used to know. Okay. And the because I don't know. It seems like that. Like every time he kind of goes away, it's like okay, it's a different Patrick. Dope. Like, well, I mean, that was the thing. That was the thing when I stopped talking to him. Was like it seemed like he was the party guy that was with his other group. That it wasn't like me and us. Yeah. Um, and I, I pissed him off. Did I ever tell you that story? No. Well, I pissed him off. Um, I don't know if I want to go into details on this. Um, God. No, you know why. The whole AJ thing? No, that goes even further back. I had nothing to do with that. I was oh. on Patrick's side for that. Oh, okay. No, remember like what you guys were talking about when we had the Kings Cup game? You guys were chilling and what he was going through. Do you remember what he was going through? Dude, anytime I play King's Cup, it's gone. To like, Well, he was going through something, right? Oh, okay. With a mutual friend. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And, um, you know, and I was getting... Trying to... Mm, with... Mm, <laughs> 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 Super vague. Um, Weren't we all? Um, I'm totally kidding. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> um... But yeah, and then like, we were cool, we were cool, um, I got with Rose, we were getting married, I wanted Patrick to be in the wedding party, and then he stopped responding to me, you know, I'm like, hey, we got this thing coming up, I want to, you know, costumes, blah, 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 figure this out, um, and so I contacted that person, and I was like, hey, have you heard from Patrick, you know, and of course, he was going through all the things, because I, I don't know. And I felt the need to unburden any kind of feelings that I may have had. Like, you know, you fucking hurt him. <laughs> oh, dude. So bad. You know, I don't know why. I don't know why I Did felt... you burn that bridge? I think so. That's I'm, a bummer. I'm pretty sure that... Should... that... <laughs> no, clearly we're... It was super cool. <laughs> it... <laughs> <laughs> the sexually androgynous reference, whatever that word would be, was cool. Right. I know. Um, but I, I... And really, really upset that person. Really bad. And it almost immediately, fucking, I got a text from Patrick. You know what I mean? Oh. Uh, 
Um, so, like, I, I fucking pissed him off. You know, I pissed both of these people's, people off. And I, you know, and I will get into this mood where I'm just like, well, fuck you then. Fuck it. Fuck it all. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Fuck you guys! Don't fucking tell me what to do. Okay, Carrying around a bucket full of buckets. Um, and so I don't know. Somewhere down the line, I felt the need to apologize, and I did. Um, when the fuck did I hit up Patrick last? Why did I hit him up? Miss you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't remember. It had to have been prior uh, around around this time last year. Okay. Um, I forget why. I forget what. Um, but he was just like, oh yeah, I'm doing good, blah, blah, blah. Um, maybe I wanted him to podcast or something. And he was like, yeah, yeah, maybe, but first, you know, I want to get together with you and Dakota and Corey and we just bullshit. <clears throat> but it never happened. That's a bummer. Um, I miss but Patrick. I, He's I, a good dude. I did run into him on my birthday this year, though, when me and Rose were downtown. Oh, okay. Pokemon. And he would happen to be walking. On the sidewalk towards us. Like, hey! Yes, and he was like, it's your birthday. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, maybe you'll see him at the movie premiere, if there ever is a movie premiere. You'll get it done, dude. Don't even stress about how long it takes. It's not a matter of how long you. it takes, but, like, Greg has it, and he's not really forthcoming with information of how it's going. I've been, I don't know, I don't know, I've been telling you for a while, like, take a little t more time in editing. Well, I mean, Greg, yeah, but I mean, Greg's got it, and he's doing whatever he's doing with it. But, I mean, I don't know if he's doing anything with it. Maybe he looks at it once a week or something. <laughs> I mean, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's doing Nutcracker right now. Oh, shit. And he's working. Is he still working at Henry Schein? Yeah, I think so. Fuck on. Um, but, yeah, no. So that Greg's was like, another dude. You just super cool. He's just always been super cool. It's probably because... He's Christian. Oh, he's Christian? Yeah. Huh. Like, he's super religious. Okay. He's super liberal. He's like a liberal conservative. A conservative liberal. I don't know. Most of us land somewhere in the middle, <laughs> so i got to be honest. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, I mean, like, he's not very forthcoming with information. I'm always afraid to ask him because I don't want to be like, hey, how's it going? He's like, fuck you, take it then. <laughs> <laughs> I know he wouldn't do that in those words. So I'm, I just leave it alone, and he lets me know when he lets me know. Sure. Last time I asked him, he, was like, he said he was waiting for Black Friday to buy something to help out with the movie. Black Friday's come and gone, so, I mean, hopefully it's moving forward. But, yeah, and then Not too <laughs> But, I mean, I've been putting all the old podcasts on YouTube, like, the past week. Mm -hmm. So I've been catching snippets of the beginning of them so that I can put up a bumper on here like this. Um, you know, the ones at the front. And like, you know, I'll hear conversations with me and Kelly. I'll hear conversations with me and Patrick, me and Melissa, me and you, me yeah. and Corey. And it's like, man, like there's a, like my whole life over the past, what, 2010, 2009? No, 2010. 2010. 2010, October 2010 was the first podcast that I did. Yeah. With Melissa and Patrick. But I mean, just like listening to those, like, man, those were fun times, you know? Like, it goes through like my whole marriage Please. and then like not being married and then making Street Meets Payment and then making God Salt. You know, it's just, it's all there. So, like, it would be kind of cool to go back and maybe have one of them over again to podcast. Or do, like, a big collection of all of us. That would get out of control. It would get rowdy. You know, it's funny. You said something just like this in the previous, one of the previous ones just prior to episode 50. Really? Yeah, you said, like, the same thing. I feel like it would be 50, super cool. And then we did it in episode 50. You, me, Greg, and Kelly. Okay. I remember that. Um, so, yeah. Here you are podcasting again, Dakota. Hey, hey. <laughs> suck me back in. <laughs> it's crazy. I wanted to do like a Christmas special. Um, 
and I wanted to maybe like write like a radio script that would be like really funny, but I don't think I have the time or patience to sit down and get it done. Or even if you just like, like these are the talking points. Sure, and like kind of let too. everybody kind of ad lib and bring their own kind of flavor to it. Right, but like this is where we're gonna be you know, for the first 10 minutes and then we're going to be here for the next 15, the next 10, next I used 10. to do talking points. Like I would think about something and then I'd write it down and then I would bring it up with whoever I was talking to, you or Patrick or whatever. Well, that makes sense. Like banging aliens. Banging aliens. Oh, dude. I think you were all for it. <laughs> I would. Totally. As long as they're an alluring shape. A throwback. <laughs> what if it's like not an alluring shape? Did you see the arrival? No, <laughs> I wanted to. The only movie I've gone to see in the in theaters lately is Doctor Strange. Yeah, and did you love it? Yes, <laughs> so much. Uh, it's hard for me not to like. I texted you like, man, I miss playing Hero. Exactly, you are always using fucking Doctor Strange, like the weird like ghost. Yeah, thing with him, top like his, his essence, as you see in the movie. So good, dude. Yeah, I feel like... Well, we talked about Doctor Strange already. Me the and Corey movie. and the previous... Oh, well, fuck <laughs> that! I mean, I'm super sad that Corey died. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you think about Doctor Strange? Like you were about to say. I just feel like Marvel can do no wrong. I feel like they have like the perfect... But do you feel like, like maybe... And this is one thing we talked about. Is that Doctor Strange is really good. I really liked it. But it was just like another superhero movie like the previous one. Like, do you think they've hit a plateau? I mean, it's fine. They're all good. I like them all. I think they're great. But, like, not one is necessarily different than the next. What do you mean? And, 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 and like, before big action sequence. Before you continue, I do see a differentiation between, like, if you compare like the first movie of each of these franchises, like Iron Man is on movie four. They completed three. They would be working on four now. Yes. Um, Thor is working on three. Yes. So obviously the, the, the creation, like the, the makeup of the movie is going to be different because they're, they're right. The story movie. is different. The plot, the plot's different, but they've all got the same beats. Yes, but I feel like that's a good. But I'm not saying that they're they're crappy movies, but I, don't I think feel like one, that's a good recipe. I think they've kind of put themselves into a box, and they haven't expanded outside of the box. Well, yet. I think that where you start to see expanding outside of the box is where it's not like when they used to make comic book movies, like the old Batman movies and the old like the older incantations of superheroes outside of a comic book. I, I, I truly believe that now they're trying, they're looking at these characters as standalone characters and you don't take any understanding when you walk into that movie theater, you take zero understanding of who this person is. Okay. Or what they, what piece they play. So I feel like there's a lot of like origin story in the first incantation of these movies. Right. And I feel like strange. the first one to do it and and it bothers me that that DC can't get their shit together because the Dark Knight series, those three movies, I feel like was the epitome and and I th I feel like Marvel watched those and was like that. We need that. <laughs> that is what we need. Mm -hmm. Because the first movie is almost all origin story. Well, look, I feel like like Thor and Captain America were very good at being different origin stories. But like but Iron I, Man and like Ant-Man and like Doctor Strange, they're all basically the same origin story. It's 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 the same origin story and I and I feel like you can even rope um Captain America and and Thor, Thor. if you take where they are or like their their the time frame or location out of it it's the same recipe well no it's because the same thor recipe. didn't become thor he was born thor exactly but they take and introduce him and like to you rather you know 
these people have lived entire lives. You know, they don't start with Tony Stark was a baby. And well, but I mean, Tony Stark was a regular guy. Doctor Strange was a regular guy. Ant Man was a regular guy. Captain America was Captain a regular America guy. was less than a regular guy, and he became a super guy. Like Hong Kong Fui. <laughs> Number one super guy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. I just, I really, really enjoy that recipe. And I watched uh, Batman vs. Superman I said Superman it wasn't again. wrong. I said there was no... <laughs> it's just as bad the second time. Have you seen Suicide Squad? It's better, <laughs> but it's nowhere... It's, not it's nowhere near... It, like, I don't know. I think of... There was no point in Doctor Strange... Where, like, they broke my suspended disbelief. If that makes any sense. Where they were, where I just, like, it sitting in the theater was like, nope, that, no. And I feel like they, I don't know, they, they give you the first hour of the movie is like this, or half hour of the movie is this, this is who Dr. Stephen Strange is. Right. Boom, this is the event that, you know, the catalyst for all of this change. And then here is his growth. And then you almost see him like beginning to peak at the end of the movie. And if they do a, a second Dr. Strange movie, it's going to pick up right where that left off. And there will be some other catalyst that forces him to progress further, just like every other superhero movie, because it's that superhero dynamic. If you read comic books, there's not a whole lot of difference between these characters. They, they all start with, Here's a normal guy. Well, see, that's the Something thing. is crazy like happens, books are able comes to out, spread their arms. And he, but he comes out the other side. you're not able to spread your arms. In your movies, you've got to cram them into a movie, 50 comic books. Like, because the actors are getting older, it costs money to make a movie. In a comic book, you can watch their lives progress a little bit, like a soap opera. But in a movie... But would you read if... So, your thing, 50 comic books... Would you read... Let's call it 12 comic books because that's a year's worth of comics. Okay, so 12 comic books over two wow. hours. So we're looking at six hours, half hour. Would you read three full comic books of this motherfucker complaining about how difficult surgery is, save a couple people's lives, and go tearing off in his Lamborghini? <laughs> would you read three comic books of that? Or would you read the first one like, mm, I'm not going to buy this again. Like, this is dumb. <laughs> There's nothing interesting about this guy. <laughs> Rather than wait for issue number 12 for him to do something. Exactly. Different. And I and I feel like movies, it is it is a different thing. But I think that in comic books, you have this thin piece well, of paper. Look, and that, that origin story and that buildup has to be quick. And I think that, that what ends up happening is like, here is this superhero. And then they give you glimpses over the year of like, well, this is how he got here. This, this is what happened well, here. Look, and this if you what, watch... Iron Man, then you know that there is no way in hell that Captain America is not going to become Captain America and Thor and Ant-Man and Doctor Strange. There is no fear that these people are not invincible. Does that make any sense? Yes. So going into the movie, you know that despite anything that you see, no matter how difficult the villain is against your hero... That it's all going to be cool in the end. I mean, and, and that sounds completely ignorant because basically all movies are like that, but not really. But in these superhero ones, because there's a point in Doctor Strange where he's like, I just killed that guy. I, I didn't ask for any of this. Do you really believe that he's going to walk away from this by the end of the movie? Fuck no. He's going to be Doctor Strange a superhero by the end of the movie. Exactly. But there I is no real... Fear and belief that anything is going to happen to your hero, and and, and I just like I, in that's, Civil that's War. That's what I mean. In that's Civil what I mean War, by suspended disbelief. Like you are, because there was. You're talking about a moment where you were just like, no, like why throw that line in if you're not going to follow through with it? And it's not. And, they and I think that they, they do that, that to create me. that like that humanizing pull because if this person if you went back to the old ways of like the old Batman movies where if you, have you gone back and watched any of the old Batman movies like the Michael Keaton Batman yes ones? they suck 
<laughs> because all it is is him showing up, being awesome, and then going and living in action, and then he shows away. back up and he fucks shit up because he's awesome. And there's no like, there's no human element. There's no like. It seems when was intangible. the last time you watched him? Uh, I watched Batman Forever two weeks ago. Really? Yes. It's a totally watchable movie. Totally more watchable now than it was years ago for me. And 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 for me, I think it's it's lacking that human element. And like I said, the first movie that like just holy shit was Batman Begins. Mm -hmm. Like. Wow. And it, and it's because it's the first movie to take a superhero and grab them and pull them down to our level and show them show that this guy's human. He may have access to insane shit that allows him to compound his ability to be going incredibly on. smart and incredibly like badass. It just amplifies that. And you know, but that's the only thing separating you from him. He's a normal dude. Maybe in Batman Begins, but in The Dark Knight, he kind of becomes invincible and just kind of defies logic and does whatever he wants. Now, I love The Dark Knight. I think it's great. But the more you watch it, the more it's like, I don't understand exactly what he's doing. They say he's more of a detective in The Dark Knight, but, like, I don't understand, like, when he, like, takes the brick, the concrete out of the wall where the bullet was shattered in. I don't understand how when he shoots a different bullet into these different brick walls, like he's getting like a thumbprint off of the bullet that he originally got. But I don't really understand what he's doing there. He's looking to match a... So like, my guess at least, when you fire some... Like fire a certain round at the wall, it does a certain something. Right. He's mapping I get that, that much. But how is that... Like, he's already got the bullet. Why is he testing something else out? Like, I get what they're telling us is that he's figuring it out, but they didn't really tell us how it was working. And that bothers me every time I see it. I feel like they do that with a lot of Batman shit. Right. They don't explain how it works because you don't need to know how it works. It just needs to look like, this is what it does. There you go. It seems like in The Dark Knight, he got a lot of things that he only ever uses once. Like what? It's just like the, the whole cell phone thing. And I get it. He's like, okay, just type in your name and it'll go away. And it does. But, I mean, despite that, it's a very useful thing for him to use in the battle to fight crime. I guess. Sure, Lucius Fox was against it, but the Batman in the comic books would be totally all for that. Batman is the big brother against crime, whereas the government is the big brother against freedom. <laughs> But, I mean, and on top of that, there, there's a lot of things, like, like, the Joker is expecting Batman to figure these things out. And, it, it I don't know, it's... But I also think that... Like, Bat he goes, no, he goes, so Batman, uh, when they're going to kill the mayor at the, the the ceremony for the commissioner... Yeah. And Joker's there dressed up as a cop. Batman finds those actual cops tied up. He walks into that building at the very second the Joker needed him to walk in because he walks over to the window. The timer goes off and the window flap goes See, up and the cops shoot in there. If he would have been five minutes earlier and dealt with that, that thing wouldn't have gone up. If he would have... No, 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 no. I think, it's, later, I think it's triggered off of him entering the room. But you don't number see that. one because there's number a two, timer there. Number two, I think that it plays to the dynamic between Batman and the Joker. And the dynamic is that as awesome as Batman is, this crazy fucking lunatic <laughs> is always one step ahead. That's fine for you and me. But what about like Joe Schmo nobody who's just going to see a Batman movie? Was it anything that is so unbelievable that it broke your suspended disbelief? It's not that it's unbelievable. It's just the little quirks that I have. Because it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's infathomable! Like, the more that I watched Dark Knight, which is a movie that I loved when I first saw it, the more things that I can pull apart from it. Like, the writers decided, like, 
just, you know, oh, there was something that I was talking about with Rose, and we saw something, and it bothered me. It was something in a movie that they kind of just, oh, fuck, what was it? But it really bothered me in a movie, and it wasn't Batman, I don't think. Oh, I wish I could remember what it was, but it, it was something along the lines of, like, when I'm writing a movie, and I want to get from point A to B, I'm not just going to be, like, put a throwaway line and suddenly it makes everything better. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go back. I'm going to reverse engineer it to how would he get to there from here and figure out how it would make sense. Yeah. Because if I can't make it make sense, then I'm just going to change the idea. Yeah. And we watched something where... To get from point A to point B, the writers obviously didn't know how to do it, so they put in a little throwaway line, and suddenly that makes everything <laughs> better. Poof. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't remember what it was, but it was something we watched recently. Was it in Doctor Strange? No, I don't think it was Doctor Strange. But it seems like writers are getting real lazy nowadays. Even good writers. Like, did you see Star Trek Beyond? Yes. That one seems a little lazy writing, too. Even if it was written by Simon Pegg. Like, it was good and everything else like that. But it, it felt like, at times, there was some lazy writing in there. Oh, you know, fucking... The bad guy in that movie never really made any sense to me. I get what he was... But I don't understand why he was changing physically. Did it explain why he was changing physically in that movie? I'm pretty sure. Because I missed it then. Because he's a crazy looking alien and he starts to turn more and more normal. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they ever explained that. And I don't know if they ever explained why he was normal to begin with and started changing and changing and changing. Like, And then it also didn't explain why... if. He, him and his people on the ship or the planet or wherever they were, while they all changed, how come one of his people happened to be gone into Starfleet and got onto the Enterprise? Well, I mean, they explain all that, but, like, if one of his only people managed to get out there in this alien world, it's like they just kind of, like, we need this setup in order for the movie to work, and if we just kind of skim over the details, it's fine. Well, I think that you have to select, like, people ex expect a certain amount of content in a movie. And I think that there are, you almost have to cut corners on certain things. Even so, like, I, I, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with cutting corners where needed. But as an artist, you should be able to figure a way to make it work without like having to elaborate it. too much. And without dismissing it. Like even even dismissing can be artistic in a way as long as you dismiss it correctly. Like there are plenty of throwaway lines in my movies that that if you go back and you watch, like it's there if you look for it, but it's still there. Sometimes in these movies they don't even put it there, and sometimes they don't even give you enough to fill in the blanks. Like I love filling in the blanks in movies. Mm -hmm. I do that with mine. But, like, Star Trek, I, I can't fill in the blank as to why they're changing and then changing back. But it might be in there. I, I could probably use another watch, but I honestly don't think it was there. <laughs> but I, lo I love Doctor Strange. I thought it was great. I'm not trying to take anything away from it. I'm taking, you are, I'm you taking away from superhero movies in general, as in... We've come to expect as audience members for our superhero movies to be a certain way. But it seems to me like DC can't fucking get it together. They just can't do it. Well, they I, can't make anything that's on par with anything that Marvel Studios is cranking out. Well, I, I enjoyed the... Ant-Man more than Batman vs. Superman. And Batman vs. Superman is like... That's a, that's a big fucking thing. Like, that's a big deal... Those are two iconic well, superheroes. Pretty much all of the Marvel movies are more fighting. watchable than Superman versus Batman. 
And it, it's just the problem with like someone saying, we got to copy Marvel probably. And I think Zack Snyder isn't that great of a director. Agreed. So the spirit. <laughs> he didn't do that. Who did the spirit? Uh, Frank Miller. Frank Miller did the Fuck. spirit. Never mind. Um, but <laughs> I, I just... I think DC's problem is that they're trying to be Marvel, and I think they're trying to jump ahead of the race. Oh, to like catch up with the fact that Marvel's been putting these movies out in this kind of series that they've been building. Right, Marvel's put out you know for, fifteen movies or whatever. And yeah, DC's like, well, we've got to pretend like we're on number sixteen and try and fit five of them into each movie. The fact that Doomsday was like a throwaway character pissed me off dude right we talked about that when that you guys came over here like that was its upset own me. movie Could exactly own movie. like doomsday shows up some shit's happening dude. right like the death of superman should have been its own movie mm -hmm. and it could have built up to doomsday rather than like oh hey here's doomsday yeah woo. <laughs> you know can you point out how many characters in this movie oh look there's aquaman there's cyborg there's flash Everybody's in here, so we don't need to make those movies because we know they exist. And then it's like... Are they going to just jump straight into a Justice League movie? Yeah. Are you serious? I'm pretty sure. That's fucked. Did you see that Justice League trailer? No! You didn't see the Justice League no! trailer? No! There's, there's been a Justice League trailer for like a year now. No! Maybe not. Yeah, for like a year now. That bums me out. It's, there was it's Superman that whole thing. Batman, and then Comic Con of last year. I feel like this year. I feel like okay, DC has now. so much to offer. Like they have some really, really cool characters, and and they're doing nothing with them. When it comes to moving them out of a comic book and placing them onto the big screen, and I think it's just like pressure. But I also, and, I also the think that there's not a there's not a great deal of backstory in DC Comics. You kidding? What backstory do you think there's not? I don't think Opposed that it's to Marvel. I just don't think that it's as in depth. If that makes any sense. You're ignorant. You're just not as well informed. They've got just as much backstory as Marvel does. They're not showing that. <laughs> you mean in the movies? In the movies. But they've got a good TV show universe with Arrow and Supergirl and Flash. And I don't Gotham. like Supergirl. Flash was tolerable for like the first Whether season or, not or two. Whether you like it, those shows are popular. More popular than the movies are. I mean, I, I not everything is for everybody. But if sense. you see that everybody's watching it, people love... The first three seasons of Arrow were phenomenal. <laughs> are they still is it still on yeah, yeah and Legends of Tomorrow is also a show too that's still on right it is and Gotham Gotham's dope I liked Gotham but all of those the DC TV universe seems to be thriving and it's because they're like okay we, we've got a show we've got at least 24 episodes that we can build on Whereas it's like, okay, we've got a movie, we've got to catch up to Marvel, we've got to be awesome out the gate, and instead everything's getting stuck at the door. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's trying to push through at once. You know, it's like, okay, once we get ahead of Marvel, then we can slow down and bring it back. Yeah. But then you're blowing up your engine trying to go too fast. But it's also, with DC, like, where to, where to start? Like, if that makes any sense. Well, it's the same thing with Spider-Man. They've already done two origin stories for Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, one Spider-Man, a reboot, and now they're doing it again. And that was kind of thing back with, with Marvel. Kind of. Yeah, with well, we'll say with Marvel. But like with Superman vs. Batman, like you get a little bit of the Batman origin in the front, and then they move on to the movie. Have you seen the trailers for Logan? Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna love that movie, uh, and it's gonna be R-rated like Deadpool was. Um, you damn right. <laughs> Did you ever read Old Man Logan? Did I ever let you borrow no. that and read it? It looks like Professor X's character is based on the Hawkeye character in the, the Old Man Logan comic book. 
Okay. So he hooks up with Hawkeye in the comic book. And they go do their thing. Okay. And this, it looks like they're using Professor X. Okay. It'd be cool if they could have gotten fucking Hawkeye. Because he's blind in the comic book and shit. But he's still fucking badass and, and can aim fucking amazing. And he, like, had a daughter with, like, uh, Spider-Man's daughter. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it, it's this whole thing, and it's really out there, but it makes sense in that self-contained Old Man Logan universe. Yeah. Um, and you can see where they kind of are, are kind of doing that in the movie, but not, but not so different that it, it takes away. Yeah, they're still trying to fit it in with the universe that they've created. And, and still being faithful in spirit and tone to what the comic book was. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's the comic book's full of characters that aren't owned by Sony. You know, so like... like well, I thought Logan was under the Marvel banner. No, it's Sony. It might say Marvel somewhere in there, but because Wolverine's like a Marvel character, but Sony owns they haven't all the done mutants. That. They haven't done that with uh, like any of the Spider-Man movies or any of the uh, X-Men movies that are owned by Fox. They all say Marvel in front. No way! Yeah. No. Yeah. But Sony owns all the mutants. Like, they had to make a deal for... Oh, what did they have to make a deal for? I mean, clearly they made a deal for Spider-Man. Yeah. But the, uh, what was the other deal? It was some mutants. Some mutant. Oh, it, I thought no, that it was, was the no, it was, movie. No, it was in Deadpool, the Negasonic oh. Teenage Warhead. And Colossus? No, just her. How do they own the X-Men and not Colossus? No, 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 no. They own Colossus. They didn't own her. Sony, who owns like Deadpool and made Deadpool, did not own Negasonic Teenage Warhead. And they swapped her for Spider-Man, I think. Oh, okay. So that they can put her into... Oh, no, no, no. They swapped her for Ego in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Okay. So, because James Gunn wrote Ego as Homeboy's dad. Okay. And But when he wrote the script, he didn't know that they didn't have a character. So they swapped her for him. And then, of course, whatever deal they make for Spider-Man. But, yeah. Yeah, let me see this. I think I wanted to wanted to do one of these. There we go. Go to page three hundred six. Three hundred six. Three hundred six. I haven't done this in a while. I used to do this on like every podcast. Um, all right, so we'll close out this episode with a reading from "Shooting the Shit with Kevin Smith" best smodcast. I will go ahead and read the Kevin Smith parts. Holy shit, how long is this? Uh, I think it's ten pages. You're making me read ten pages? Uh, I believe it's ten pages. Uh, no, it's thirteen. Oh. It's 306 through 19. That's thirteen. Well, this is a... This is a Christmas-themed conversation. Um, and I will go ahead and go and do this. Uh, from Smodcast 66, Sleep Near the Conqueror, Origins of Santa Claus, and Satan Klaus. I think, it's, I think they said Klaus. We'll go with Klaus. South Pole, Antarctica is what? Top of the world or bottom of the world? I thought Antarctica was the bottom. What's the top? Don't you feel stupid at moments like this? Where you're like, I've been around for 38 fucking years and it's only now occurred to me to ask, what's the top of the world? I know that. It's the North Pole. There's the Antarctic and Arctic Sea. I don't think it's called the Arctic. Now you've got to look it up. Just look at a globe. I don't have one here. You've got the internet. Type globe. Map of the world. <laughs> Antarctic is the world's southernmost continent. You were right. Overlaying, overlying the South Pole. It is situated in the southern hemisphere, almost entirely south of the Antarctic Circle. But it doesn't tell you it's opposite. The Joker to its Batman is... I think it says Nemesis. <laughs> These two hate each other. These two giant ice formations will fight each other in the future. There's the North Pole. It might be called the Arctic. I'm putting up North Pole. There's the Arctic Sea. Maybe Antarctic is the opposite of Arctic? 
Hey man, while the South Pole lies on the continental landmass, the North Pole is located in the middle of the Arctic Ocean amidst waters that are almost permanently covered with constantly shifting sea ice. This makes it impossible to construct a permanent station at the North Pole, unlike the South Pole. Wow, that is fascinating. Fuck Smodcast. Let's just read Wikipedia out loud for the next hour. <laughs> you mean to tell me that though that all this time that we've been telling kids that Santa lives at the North Pole and all they would have to do is go on the internet and see nothing can live at the North Pole because there's constantly shifting sea ice? Santa can't live on a shifting sea or land mass? I mean, he's a magical creature. Who is? If you believe in Santa Claus and some kid goes, there's shifting land masses, I'd be like, of course he lives on shifting land masses. He's fucking Santa Claus. But at the same time, that has never been included in any of the songs, the TV specials, you never heard sings, or you never heard, and Santa on his shifting land mass, putting together toys for all the girls and boys. There's nothing included in the lore. That is true. I've never seen a Rankin Bass special where the little puppets are like, whoa, we're moving again, everybody, because you all know, everybody buckle up, the North Pole is a constantly shifting landmass. That would be more credible. If I was a kid and I saw that, I'd be like, wow, it must be true. Why would they include that in the story if not? Why not just make it at the South Pole? Because nothing good comes from the South. Everyone knows that. Santa the racist mm. and stuff, or Santa's just like, oh, I've got toys for girls and boys, but, you know... Are they white? I've got two lists. I don't know why they went for the North Pole. Well, he's northern. Maybe that's why. When they created Santa, they had those dudes race to the poles yet? Who are the dudes that race to the poles? Cook and Perry? Is that them? Should I look it up? That's the problem with a little bit of education. Wikipedia is, there is nothing for Cook and Perry. I think that the mythology, the folklore surrounding Santa Claus, or St. Nicholas, would predate people going to the North Pole. But I bet you the North Pole thing, that came way later. The whole notion of Father Christmas and shit, they never gave him a place to live until some fucking kid was like, where does he live? And they're like, fuck, where will the uh, kid never go? The North Pole! I would argue that if you were creating that mythology, wouldn't you? Like, no one is ever going to go there. We'll never get there. At that point, I guess. Just say North Pole. You might as well say Santa lives on the moon. Who were cooking Perry? The least famous? Was that not their names? No, dude, I'm right. Okay, I entered Race for the Poles. I got an IMDB hit. I saw a name. Matthew Perry? Frederick Albert Cook. Let's look up this motherfucker. It says, Frederick Albert Cook was an American explorer and physician noted for his claim for having reached the North Pole in April 1908, a year before Robert Perry. It's, it's Perry, not Perry. I was right, but I entered Cook and Perry. You should say, first man at the North Pole. He was the first guy to get to the North Pole. There were these two dudes. I don't know the full story, but I imagine it goes something like this. Two dudes in a bar bet, I'm going to get to the fucking North Pole. And Perry's like, the fuck you are? And then it happened. So they went out after it. But 1908. There was Santa Claus before 1908. There would have been. Let's look up Santa Claus. But I would argue the North Pole was maybe thrown out there as no one, else, no one will ever get out there. Or, who the fuck wants to go there? One legend associated with Santa says that he lives in the far north in a land of perpetual snow. The American version of Santa Claus lives at the North Pole. While Father Christmas is said to reside in Lapland. Lapland? Santa lives in a fucking strip club? He's like, I enjoy free buffet and fake grinding sex. Other details include he is married, lives with Mrs. Claus, he makes a list of children throughout the world. All the shit we know. Where's Lapland? Norway? I don't know, but I'm going to click on it. Lapland province is a, is in Finland, or Lapland, Sweden. The name is not in official use. Maybe they had to change it because they were like, maybe for the Brits it was Lapland, Sweden, and so many people were like, I can go to Lapland, Sweden. Finally, Sweden was like, we're changing the fucking name because we're tired of this tourism. We don't want your money. I want to see if they come up with when, what they come up when they decided it was the North Pole. Who created that? They said it was American. Maybe it was Cook. You think so? I've been there. I was there. And there was a dude making toys. And nobody was interested. Who gives a fuck? You're wasting time. It's ice. It's a shifting landmass. Yeah, everyone knows it's just on a bed of shifting sea ice. Then he was, fuck, I'm losing them. I should have gone south. You know who I saw there? Santa Claus. They're like, what? Really? People got interested again, so he's like, yeah, yeah, Santa Claus was up there. It was amazing. He's got a really nice house. He's got a wife, and he's got help, and he makes toys and keeps a list. Maybe this dude came up with it. Influence of Germanic paganism and folklore. Santa taking lives. Numerous parallels have been drawn between Santa Claus and the figure of Odin. 
a major god to the Germanic peoples prior to the Christianization. Since many of these elements are unrelated to Christianity, there are theories regarding the pagan origins of various customs of the holiday stemming from areas with a Germanic people Christianized but retaining elements of their indigenous traditions surviving in various forms into modern depictions of Santa Claus. Odin was sometimes recorded at the native Germanic holiday of Yule as leading a great hunting party through the sky. This sounds so stupid. Two books from Iceland, the Poetic Edda, compiled in the 13th century from the earlier sources, and the Prose Edda, written in the 13th century by Snorri Sturluson. What a great name! What's up, Snorri? <laughs> Described Odin as riding an eight-legged horse named Sleipner that would leap great distances, giving rising to the comparisons to Santa's reindeer. Further, Odin was referred to by many in skaldic poetry, some of which describe his appearance or functions. These include a bunch of words I can't fucking say, but they mean long beard or gold figure. According to Phyllis Seifker, children would place their boots filled with, this is so weird, carrots, straw, or sugar near the chimney for Odin's, Odin's flying horse Sleipner to eat. Odin would then reward, reward those children for their kindness by replacing Sleipner's food with gifts or candy. This practice survives in Germany, Norway, and the Netherlands after the adoption of Christianity and became associated with St. Nicholas as a result of the process of Christianization and can still be seen in the modern practice of hanging stockings in the chimney in some new homes. Wow. All right, that's enough. <laughs> it's going to go on for a bunch more pages. Many, many more pages. All right, well, I think that's it. All right. Uh, Thanks for coming by and podcasting. No, no. Go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we need to do it more often. Hell yeah. Agreed. Um, well, with that, I'm Matt Bonta. And I'm Dakota Kahn. Peace.